observe this map of India. It shows all its states and union territories. We can write all the states and union territories as a set. Let us call this set A. We can even make a set of all states. This set will however be smaller than the set of all states and union territories. Similarly, the set of all students of your school is a bigger set as compared to the set of all students of class 11. If we define a set and then take a part of that set, we build what we call a subset and the bigger set is the superset of the smaller sets. Let's learn more about subsets and supersets. To understand the concept of subsets of a set, let's take a simple set, say A consisting of first five natural numbers. Let's form sets B, C and D that are a part of set A. These smaller sets, that is, B, C and D are called subsets of set A. Formally, we can say that a set A is a subset of another set B if every element of set A is also an element of set B. Symbolically, this is denoted as shown. On the other hand, set A is not a subset of set B if there is at least one element, say, X in set A which is not an element of set B. Symbolically, A is not a subset of B is denoted as shown here. We can say that in the fruits section of a supermarket, the set of apples is a subset of the set of fruits. Similarly, in the English language, the set of vowels is a subset of the set of alphabets. We have known some subsets for a few years without knowing that they are actually subsets. Let's find out these subsets. We denote the set of real numbers by R, the set of natural numbers by N, the set of integers by Z, the set of rational numbers by Q and the set of irrational numbers by T. Every natural number is an integer, every integer is a rational number and every rational number is a real number. Thus, N is a subset of Z, which is a subset of Q, which in turn is a subset of a set of real numbers. The set T is composed of all real numbers other than the rational numbers such as root 2, pi, etc. Thus, T is a subset of R, but Q is not a subset of T. Using the definition of subset, can we say that a set A is a subset of itself? Since every element of set A is also in set A, so by definition, we can say that a given set A is a subset of A. Hence, we can generalize that every set is a subset of itself. This is denoted as shown here. Even though there is nothing factually wrong with this, it doesn't seem very proper, does it? We want our subsets to be proper. A proper subset of a set is one that can fit into that set. In other words, we can say that A is a proper subset of B if and only if every element in A is also in B and there exists at least one element in B that is not in A. In addition, when A is a proper subset of B, we say B is a superset of A. For example, in the given sets A and B, every element of set A, that is, 1 and 5, is an element of set B. At the same time, the elements 3 and 7 of set B do not belong to set A. In this case, A is a proper subset of B. How about the null set, phi? Is this a proper subset for set A? Since we can't find any elements in the null set, phi, that are not in A, so it must be that all the elements in the null set are in the set A. So null set phi is a subset of every set including the null set phi. But phi is not a proper subset of set A. In fact, there are two trivial subsets for every set, the set itself and the null set phi.
recall that two sets are equal if they have the same elements. For example, sets A and B shown here are equal sets. Notice that every element of set A is also an element of B and every element of set B is also an element of A. In other words, in the case of equal sets A and B, set A is a subset of B and set B is a subset of A. Now, if A is a subset of B and B is also a subset of A, then can we say that A and B are equal sets? Yes, if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, then A and B must be equal. For instance, consider the sets A and B as given. In this case, both A and B are subsets of each other because all elements of set A are in set B and vice versa. Although the order of the elements are different in both the sets, but all elements of set A are in set B and all elements of set B are in set A. And that is all we need to prove the equality of sets. So, the set A is equal to set B. In other words, to prove equality of sets, we need to show that all elements of set A are in set B and all elements of set B are in set A. Can we now tell whether the two sets given in the set builder form are equal? Observe that set A includes prime numbers 2 and 3 which are less than 5 and set B includes prime number 2 which is also an even number. In this case, we find that all elements of set B are in set A. But set A has an element 3 that is not in set B or set A is not a subset of set B. So A and B are not equal sets. Now, we have two sets, set X and set Y. Set X is in the set builder form and set Y is in the roster form. Are both these sets equal? Set X consists of natural numbers from 3 to 4. That means set X has only 3 and 4 as its elements. Also, set Y has 3 and 4 as its elements. We note here that all the elements of set X are in set Y and all elements of set Y are in set X. And this is what we need to show to prove equality of sets. So, we can say that set X is equal to set Y. We are familiar with the real number line simply called the number line. Let A, B be the two real numbers such that A is less than B. Now, the segment on the number line between A and B is a part of the number line itself. The set of real numbers corresponding to the portion of the number line is called an interval. The interval is obviously a subset of R. Further, if both the endpoints of the interval may be included in it, then it is called closed interval and is denoted by using square brackets. And if the endpoints of the interval are both excluded from the interval, it is called an open interval and is denoted by using the regular round brackets. It may also happen that one of the endpoints is included and the other is excluded. In that case, it is called a semi-closed interval. That is, we can also have intervals closed at one end and open at the other end. That is, square bracket A, comma B, round bracket, is an open interval from A to B, including A, but excluding B. Whereas, round bracket A, comma B, square bracket, is an open interval from A to B, including B, but excluding A. The open and closed intervals can also be written in set notation using the set builder form. The set builder form of an open interval can be written as shown. And the set builder form of a closed interval can be written as shown. The interval that includes all elements from A to B including A and excluding B. And lastly, the interval that includes all elements from A to B, excluding A and including B. The interval minus infinity to infinity describes the set of real numbers in relation to a number line. Some common subsets of the set R of real numbers are the set of non-negative real numbers. The set of positive real numbers and the set of negative real numbers. 
Let us now write the given sets as intervals. The first set consists of all real numbers from negative 4 to 6, with negative 4 excluded and 6 included. So we write negative 4 and 6 in an ordered pair by placing an opening round bracket before negative 4 and a closing square bracket after 6. The second set consists of all real numbers between negative 12 to negative 10, that is, both endpoints excluded. So we write negative 12 and negative 10 as an ordered pair enclosed in round brackets. The third set consists of all real numbers from 0 to 7, with 0 included and 7 excluded. So we write 0 and 7 in an ordered pair by placing an opening square bracket before 0 and a closing round bracket after 7. This set consists of all real numbers from 3 to 4 with both endpoints included. So we write the pair 3, 4 in square brackets. We have discussed subsets and considered the situations when one set is a subset of the other. Let's now write the subsets for a given set, say set 1, 3, 5. To write the subsets of set A, first we write sets with one element, then we write sets with two elements, and then we write set with a combination of all three elements. Finally, we write the null set, one obvious subset of every set. The set of all these subsets of A is called the power set of set A and is denoted by P of A as shown. There were three elements in the set A and there are eight elements in the power set of A. Notice that 8 is 2 raised to the power of 3. How many subsets does a set have? In other words, what is the cardinality of the power set of a set? The number of elements in a power set is 2 raised to the power of the number of elements in set A. So if n is the cardinality of set A, then the number of subsets of set A is 2 to the power of n, which is the cardinality of the power set P of A. So the number of subsets of a set with 6 elements is 2 to the power of 6. And the number of subsets with a set with 7 elements is 2 to the power of 7. Therefore, the number of subsets for a set of 7 elements is double the number of subsets for a set of 6 elements. Notice that as the total number of subsets doubles each time, the number of elements in a set increases by 1. Let's write the power set of the set A with elements 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's list down all the subsets. First we write the set with no elements, then we include the set with one element, then two elements, and then three elements, and finally all four elements. We must note that phi, the empty set, is the subset of all sets. However, in the case of the power set, it is an element. Now what is the power set of a null set? It is like asking, there is nothing available, so what do you choose? In the case of a null set, your only choice is nothing. So power set has only one just one subset, which is itself the empty set. Is there any set that contains all sets in consideration similar to how the Milky Way galaxy contains all objects of our solar system? Let's find out. Consider the sets shown here. Can you think of a set that can contain all these sets? One set, among many others, that can contain them all is the set of alphabets of the English language. Such a set is called the universal set and is usually denoted by U. Generally speaking, the universal set is a big set such that all other sets under discussion are its subsets. The set of all students of a school could be a universal set if we are discussing different sets of students above age 12. Thus, a universal set is a set that contains all elements or objects involved in the problem under consideration. Furthermore, a set that is a universal set for one problem may not be a universal set for another problem. For example, the Milky Way galaxy is not an appropriate universal set for the stars in the other galaxy. In other words, the universal set does not contain everything. It is just the superset of all sets under consideration.
Suppose set S includes all states of India. Then for set S, India is a universal set. Asia may also be considered the universal set of set S or for that matter, even the world is its universal set. It is interesting to note that generally for sets in consideration, there can be more than one universal set containing all given sets. For example, for the set of right-angled triangles, the set of all triangles can be a universal set or even the set of polygons can be the universal set because a right-angled triangle is basically a triangle or a polygon with specific characteristics. A set of quadrilaterals can be taken as universal set while considering the set of squares. Now, we have to write one more set that belongs to this universal set, the set of quadrilaterals, and also one more set that may be taken as the universal set for the set of squares. Any other set of quadrilaterals can be the set that belongs to this universal set, for example, the set of rectangles. One more set that may be taken as the universal set for the set of squares can be the set of closed curves. Given the sets A, B and C, we need to decipher which of the following may be considered as universal set or sets for all of the three sets A, B and C. It can be seen that A and B are both subsets of the first set containing A, B, C, D, E, F, G. However, set C has the element I in it too, which is not there in the given set. This means that C is not a subset of the given set. Therefore, the set with elements A, B, C, D, E, F, G cannot be the universal set for the sets A, B and C. The second given set is phi, which contains no element in it. Therefore, none of the sets A, B or C are its subsets. So obviously, phi cannot be the universal set for the sets A, B and C. The third set with elements A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, however, contains all three sets A, B and C. It is therefore the universal set for sets A, B and C. A and B are subsets of the last set containing B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. However, set C has the element A in it too, which is not there in the given set. This means that C is not a subset of the given set. Therefore, the set with elements B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I cannot be the universal set for sets A, B and C.